Hi, welcome to GTT Audio. My name's Bill Parrish, and I've invited a couple of reviewers over today, Peter Bruniger and Marshall Knack, to describe the AudioNet PAM G2 and its power supplies. I want to take you through the system that uh, we use today. For our source, because we're talking about a phono stage, we use the Kronos Limited Edition Pro with the Black Beauty Arm and the Airtight PC1 Supreme. We also did some, com some comparisons with the Kronos Sparta using the Helena Arm and the PC1 Supreme. And then the phono stages, we did a PAM G2, which is the base of all the phono stages. We compared that by itself to a AudioNet EPS extended power supply to an EPC, the external power controller, and finally the reference AudioNet EPX external power supply. The line stage for the system was AudioNet Pre-G2. The speakers that we used were the YG Acoustic Sonya 1.3s and we were bi-amping those with the AudioNet Max amplifiers and cabling everything up was Kabbalah Sosna Elation interconnects, speaker wires, and power cords. And we're the North American importer of AudioNet from Germany. I'm here today to talk to you about the PAM G2 Phono Stage, which is in front of me. And as you see, there's a lot of different boxes in front of me, but they're all based off of the PAM G2. The PAM G2 can come with several different uh, options or configurations. You could have it with one input or with two inputs. And each input is completely configurable with gain, capacitance, uh, picofarads. The loading can be different. Um, so the basic unit, which is right here, and let me turn it around for you. This one is actually configured for one input. And then here is where the second input would go. Inputs are RCA. You can come out either RCA or XLR. And all the adjustments are made right here on the back through these dials. So what makes the PAM G2 special is that you can add on external power supplies. It's sitting directly on top of the EPS G2. Now I'm holding the PAM G2 with the EPS G2. The EPS G2 is just like I said an external power supply and it takes the PAM G2 to the next level. If you want to take it one level further, you, what you can do is you can take the PAM G2 and marry it with the EPX power supply, which has so many capacitors and transformers in there that it's too heavy for me to do what I just did with the EPS G2. This is what I would call AudioNet's reference phono stage. Then, over here on the left, we have a PAM G2 with what we call an EPC, with a little display down there. Again, the PAM G2 can come with one or two inputs, each one completely configured. But on this time, rather than the dip switches or dials in the back, it's directly connected to what we'll call this smart power supply. You can configure this and change loading capacitance 
or switch between two different turntables at the listening chair. This PAM G2 with this EPC is completely remote controlled. So we've turned the units around so you could see the back of them. And again, the PAM G2 by itself. Now if you want to be able to use remote controllability, you have to order it with the EPC. These two go together because the dials are removed and then they're replaced with these 32 pin cords. So to use the PAM G2 with an EPS G2, it's simply, you buy the EPS G2, it comes with this connecting cord, you connect them, and you move your power cord from the PAM G2 to the EPS G2. You only use one power cord when you're using the phono stage, so it doesn't cost you more. And when you move up, you don't lose the value, you're not trading in the unit, you're just expanding to it. If you decide to go to the EPX, again, it's just a single cord, move the power cord down there. Now what you can't do is use both of these. So if you did go in incremental steps, I know I would, and I'm sure your dealer would take the EPS G2 back and sell you an EPX. Why does this look different over here versus this one? Well, this one's got, is set up for uh, two separate phono stages. Input one, input two. Here we just have input one. Now why does input one have four different RCAs? You plug into the bottom, these are your inputs. The top two is if you need additional loading that is not configurable back here on the dial, you can contact AudioNet or your distributor who will order you special loading plugs. So you can add to the loading. AudioNet has a loading calculator on their website. All that you have to do is plug in your phono cartridge along with your specs and it generates exactly what your loading should be. Thank you very much. I hope that you enjoy the observations and opinions that the reviewers have today. My name is Peter Brewer and your name is? It's Marshall Knack. I'm a writer at uh, Positive Feedback Online. Uh, we have uh, been invited to GTT Audio today to do a comparison of power supplies for the PAM G2 AudioNet phono stage, which is sitting right up here. We started today with the PAM G2 by itself, and then we progressed to the power supply upgrade number one, which is the EPS. And then we went on to the top level, the EPX power supply. So effectively, what we're doing here is we're looking at the differences and analyzing the differences between levels of power supply. So it's a lot of audio, high performance audio components. When you're buying a more expensive product lineup within one company, you're mostly paying for power supply upgrades and chassis enhancements. So with that as a backdrop, it was an interesting day, wasn't it? Um, rather enlightening afternoon, uh, just stepping through what a difference a power supply can make to every parameter that an audiophile is interested in. Uh, starting with the basic one chassis <clears throat> and separating out to an external mid-level power supply, the EPS, clear differences and improvements across the board going to the top of the line EPX once again. And meanwhile, the, the guts of the phono preamp staying the same. We're only talking yeah. about a power supply difference. Yeah. So we began listening sessions uh, 
with uh, Bill Evans uh, live at the Vanguard. Uh, everybody knows these recordings. We started with the PAM G2 and uh, we're using the Kronos uh, limited edition turntable. Uh, we have the Black Beauty arm which is the longer arm. Uh, we're using an, uh, an airtight uh, cartridge at the tip of the arm and we all sat down. There's a number of us here today at the listening sessions and we first played it and it sounded pretty good. Didn't you think so in the first go through? The very basic yeah. AM G2, yes indeed. Uh, in a system like this you really can hear everything that's going on uh, in, and in, in a musical kind of way. Um, that is, it's not just uh, an analysis of the parts and the uh, various um, little f uh, chair scrapes and, and things like that. Yeah. It, it yeah. sounds very musical right from the get-go. Then we went and we put into the system the EPS, which is the base uh, upgrade uh, power supply. And I heard things immediately. I heard uh, uh, a more, more uh, incisive transient response. I heard a wider dynamic range. I heard an expansion of the space. Uh, what did you hear when we did that first upgrade? Well, <clears throat> from when we started with the Bill Evans, it was sort of like, <clears throat> you know, the cymbal strikes, for instance, which can sound metallic depending on what's happening. Um, the cymbal strikes suddenly resolved into a, a transient with a bit of a shimmer after it and a trail happening beyond that. And uh, similarly for the piano, you, each of the instruments in that trio become further true to themselves. Well put. You know, when you go from the bass PAM to the EPS, and then again when you go to the EPX, once again, there's more fidelity going on. Mm -hmm. A number of listeners, uh, uh, and I included, thought we had more uh, image density when we went to the top level to the EPX. Uh, I thought wider dynamic range and then just a greater yeah. sense of uh, space in the room. It's like the room is enlarged. Yeah, very much. A, a firmer placement. I agree. And much more substantial imaging as well. Mm -hmm. you know, like solid bodies out there and what's not to like. I know. And Marshall, what was that? We just played uh, the last piece we played. And what was that? The, that was the very famous answer me recording of the uh, manual de fire. Uh, yeah, there's lots the of castanets in it. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, soprano right yeah. at the beginning who's way in the distance. Yeah. And then suddenly you hear hand claps breaking through mm -hmm. very close at the, at the plane of the speakers. Mm -hmm. And the gap between those two images that was something to focus on actually that told us a lot it did tell us a lot and I heard uh, substantial differences in the changes uh, and when we went from one power supply to the other and the biggest change I heard was when we went from the EPS which is the uh, base upgrade power supply to the EPX which is the extreme X for extreme and it was uh, to me it, it startled me how much more information was presented in the room, how much deeper the bass notes were, uh, the space between the soprano standing at the back of the stage to the front of the stage. It was uh, much, much more profound. Yeah, so <clears throat> when you think about it, <clears throat> we're starting out with a not expensive phono stage. Mm -hmm. The PAM is 10,000 10, and change. Mm -hmm. um, and it's modular, mm -hmm. depending on how the consumer buys it, it's modular, where you could at some later point decide to go for the upgrade to the next level and then beyond that to the level beyond. So you wind up with a uh, 20,000 proximate phono stage that... At the ultimate level. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, that, 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 that combination 
would be very hard to beat, I would think. You'd have, you're really looking at substantial dollars to do better than that. Well, I agree with that. I agree. Right. Well, we yeah. were, what, what weren't we hearing I know. at that level? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was delivering everything I would want as a listener. Yeah. yeah. I want that piece. I do too. Well, well there you have it. Uh, the reviewer's view uh, for an afternoon uh, visit at GTT Audio where we are listening to Power Supply. It's kind of an esoteric uh, reviewer's view today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, our, our commentary on these and uh, we urge you to, uh, to listen for yourself or to start with the, with the PAM uh, G2 and work your way up because with the top unit, uh, top power supply, it really is a tour de force. I would agree and encourage people to make that audition. Yep, I do too. Well, thank you very much and uh, uh, Peter Burning reporting from AV Showrooms and Marshall Knack from Positive Feedback Online. Thank you very much.